Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is talk to you about how we go about finding the volume of revolution for a parametric equation. So I've got an example here where I've got the equation x equals t squared minus 1 and y equals t cubed. And I've got a sketch of that parametric equation. You can see that when t equals 0, we get that x equals minus 1 and y equals 0. So it crosses the x-axis here at minus 1, 0. And then for positive values of t, we get this branch. And for negative values of t, we get this branch. And for this particular parametric equation, it's symmetrical about the x-axis. Now what I want to do in this is to take the area bounded by the curve, the positive branch of the curve, the x-axis and the y-axis between x equals 0 and x equals 3. This bit that I've shaded in green here. And I want to take this area and rotate it through 360 degrees about the x-axis or 2 pi radians about the x-axis. And the solid that it's going to generate is going to look something like this. Say the bell of a trumpet, only it would be solid. Now when it comes to working out volumes of revolution about the x-axis, you should already be familiar with the fact that that volume, let's say volume with a subscript there x for the volume about the x-axis, is pi times the integral of y squared integrated with respect to x. Between the limits x equals say x1 and x equals x2. Now we could use this formula to work out this volume, but what we would need to do is make sure we turn this parametric equation into its Cartesian form. Now, on many occasions, that can be quite tricky to do. And even if we did succeed in that, the integral of our Cartesian equation could be difficult to do as well. So we have a workaround, and what we do is we say that this is exactly the same then as pi times the integral of y squared, but in place of dx, we write dx by dt, and then put a dt there. It's as if those two dt's cancel out, leaving us with dx. But this integral here is with respect to t. And what we need to do is change our limits, which were with respect to x, now to limits with respect to t. So we find out the corresponding value of t that is associated with x1. Let's say we call it t1, and similarly, the corresponding t value that's associated with x2. I'll call it t2. So this is the formula that we would use now when it comes to working out the volume of revolution for parametric equations. And I'll use this on this example here. So let's just divide this off first of all. Okay, come down there. So if I was asked then to find this volume of revolution, I'd start off by saying the volume would be equal to pi times the integral. And I would go back to the original Cartesian one, which would be the integral of y squared with respect to x, with the limits of x going from 0 to 3. So going from 0 to 3. Now, using this idea here, I would see that this is exactly the same then as pi times the integral of y squared, I can replace y with t cubed, so I've got t cubed, and that is all squared. So in other words, that's going to be t to the power 6. And then we times it with dx by dt. Well, I need to get dx by dt, so what I'll do is just section this off here, and we'll work out what dx by dt is. We know that x equals t squared 
minus 1. OK, we've got it up here. And so therefore, if I differentiate this with respect to t in the usual way, we get dx by dt equals 2t. And so I can put that in here, 2t for dx by dt, and then the dt there. OK, now I'm integrating with respect to t and I need to change my limits. So we'll take the lower limit, x equals 0, first of all. And we can say that when x equals 0, we would substitute it in here and have 0 equals t squared minus 1, or t squared minus 1 equals 0. And this, therefore, leads to t squared equaling 1. And if we square root both sides, we end up with t equaling 1, or minus 1, plus or minus 1. Question is, which one of these limits, these values of t, do we use? Well, if I was to choose t equals minus 1, if I substitute it into here for x, we know we'll get 0. But if I substitute it in for y, I end up with y equaling minus 1. And this is the point on the lower branch where this lower branch of the curve crosses the y-axis. Well, I'm interested in this value up here. And this is the value when t equals 1, because you get x is 0 and y is 1 here. OK, so that's the corresponding value that's associated with x equals 0, t equaling 1. So I don't need that negative 1 there. We'll just cross that out. OK, so we now need to find the corresponding value of t when x equals 3. So when x equals 3, just put that in, we've got 3 equals t squared minus 1, or t squared minus 1 equals 3. So adding 1 to both sides gives me t squared equals 4. And if I take the square root of both sides, I end up with t equaling plus or minus 2. t or minus, t 2 I should say, or minus 2. So which one of these two is it? Well, if we put minus 2 through, you'll find that you get this point on the curve. y is minus 8 when we substitute it into here. We can see that when we put t equals 2 in, it's on this positive branch, and y equals 8. So we don't need the negative 2 for this one, but we then take t equals 2 there. So that goes up there. Now, all I need to do is work out this integral. So I've got the constant 2 times the pi there. I can bring those constants out the front. I've got the integral then of t to the power 6 times another t. So that's t to the power 7. And that's integrated with respect to t between the limits t equals 1 and t equals 2. And in the usual way, if I integrate t to the power 7, that's t to the power 8 all over 8. I can pull the 8 out the front, OK? So we've got 2 pi over 8, and then I have just got t to the power 8 between the limits 1 and 2, OK? So all I need to do then is simplify this. I can see that this is pi over 4, so we've got pi over 4, and if I substitute 2 in here, I've got 2 to the power 8 minus 1 to the power 8, OK? Then, working that out, what do I get? I get 255 pi all over 4. And because it's a volume of revolution, I'm going to write unit cubed, OK? Units cubed there. So hopefully that gives you an idea now on how to handle volumes of revolution when you get parametric equations.